Open Credit Enablement Network, which is a digital infrastructure being created by the government to democratize the small ticket credit market in India. Our country's 29% GDP growth in MSME ka contribution. Hai. हमारे मैन्युफैक्चरिंग में 33 परसेंट एमएसएमई का कंट्रीब्यूशन है हमारा एक्सपोर्ट 48 परसेंट एमएसएमई में होता है देर इम्पोर्टेंट सोर्सेज ऑफ एम्प्लॉयमेंट ग्रोथ एंड इनोवेशन येट एम एस एम ईज रिसीव अ डिसप्रपोर्शनेटली स्मॉल शेयर ऑफ क्रेडिट फ्रॉम द फाइनेंशियल सिस्टम भारत की अर्थव्यवस्था तेज गति से बढ़ रही है और उस अर्थव्यवस्था के बढ़ोतरी में अगर किसी का सबसे बड़ा योगदान है तो वो हमारे एम एस एम ई सेक्टर का है छोटे और लघु उद्योग Hi everybody do you realize we live in a country of contradictions on one side you will see a huge company like kingfisher airlines which gets thousands of crores in loans will default on these loans and the banks will simply write these loans off similarly in the adani case study we saw that in spite of some adani companies having two times more liability than assets they got loans worth hundreds of crores but on the other side in the same country if you're a small business you will face a terrible time with the banks and even if you apply for a small loan of 50000 rupees more often than not you will be rejected in fact a study commissioned by the international finance corporation states that more than 80% of the msmes do not receive any formal financing in india now here most people will say bro you know what the adanis and the kingfishers are important for the indian economy but these micro and small businesses they are not at all important for the indian economy So why exactly are we talking about these micro and small businesses? Well, that is because ladies and gentlemen, the truth is far far beyond your perception. The truth is that the micro, small and medium enterprise sector of India is so so important for our economy that in the past 10 years, the MSME sector has contributed to 30% of our GDP. In the past 3 years more than 40% of our exports came from the MSME sector and most importantly this segment of India alone employs over 100 million people in the country and yet while the Adanis and the Kingfishers of India get loans worth hundreds of crores the MSMEs of India are struggling to get loans worth 50000 rupees also and this ladies and gentlemen points towards a critical problem in the banking system of India So you know what guys to solve this problem at the Global FinTech Festival of 2020 Mr Nandan Neelkani launched a revolutionary concept that could change the financial landscape of MSMEs in India and now in 2023 it is coming alive to execution The best part is that this concept is built upon the foundation of revolutionary products like Aadhaar UPI the GST system and most importantly the robust banking system of India This platform that we're talking about is called the Open Credit Enablement Network or OCEN and this will solve the most critical problem for the MSMEs of India which is the credit gap problem. Micro small and medium enterprises or MSMEs are the growth engines of India's economy. Despite contributing 30% of India's GDP, the MSME sector is underserved. The MSME credit gap is estimated to be approximately 882 trillion rupees and collectively they generate employment for more than 110 million Indians. But access to finance has been the big challenge for the sector. The primary reason for this is a lack of collateral and credit history. So in this case study let's dive deep and try to understand why is the state of MSMEs in India so so pathetic in spite of all the fintech revolution we see why aren't our MSMEs getting loans from our banking system how can open credit enablement network solve this problem and most importantly what are the study materials to help you understand this revolutionary concept better This video is brought to you by ChatGPT plus Communication Masterclass course. People, if you are somebody who struggles to speak your ideas out in public, if you are somebody who lacks the confidence to speak in public or if you are somebody who often mumbles while presenting your thoughts, I would highly recommend you to join our Communication Masterclass course. This course is a 6 weeks course whereby I will take you step by step from a beginners level all the way up to a TEDx level presentation skill. The best part is that if you have any doubts I will personally talk to you during our weekly live sessions to help you overcome every fear you have. Cherry on the cake you will also get special access to the chat GPT module whereby I will teach you how to use the secret prompts in chat GPT for storytelling for business research and even English speaking. This is why now it's communication masterclass plus chat GPT course put together. So if you also want to master your art of communication and if you want to present your ideas in the most powerful manner possible come join our communication masterclass course using the link below and I will see you in the live session
as usual, let's start from the basics and try to understand what is the fundamental problem with the MSMEs in India and why is there such a big credit gap in the Indian MSME sector. People, the biggest problem with the MSMEs of India is that they purchase in cash but they sell on credit. I repeat, they purchase in cash but they sell on credit. So let's try to understand this using an example. Let's say Ravi runs a small business selling finished textiles to retailers. He has a total of 1 lakh rupees in his bank account. Now, Ravi needs to buy raw materials worth 1 lakh rupees every month to keep his textile manufacturing unit running. And when he buys these raw materials, he has to pay his suppliers in cash. So he needs to have this amount of 1 lakh rupees available at the start of each month. And after his goods are produced, Ravi sells his finished textiles to retailers for a total of 1 lakh 50,000 rupees. This means he makes a profit of 50,000 rupees each month, right? But you know what? The catch over here is that these retailers do not pay Ravi immediately. Why? Because they operate on credit. So they will pay him only 60 days after receiving the goods. So do you see, even though Ravi is making a profit on paper, at the end of the month, he's left with zero cash in hand. But again, to continue his business operation, he has to infuse another 1 lakh rupees into his business so that he can serve his clients by buying raw materials next month. So do you see the problem over here? At the end of the first month, even though Ravi has made a profit of 50,000 rupees on paper, he has a cash flow deficit of 1 lakh rupees. So if he doesn't have this 1 lakh rupees, he won't be able to buy raw materials and he won't be able to cater to the larger orders that he's going to receive next month. This is a problem with the Indian MSMEs, whereby they purchase in cash, but they sell on credit, resulting into a cash deficit. This is why access to loans is very, very important for people like Ravi. So at this point, if Ravi could get a loan of 1 lakh rupees, he could use it to bridge this cash flow gap. But you know what guys, unfortunately, people like Ravi do not get loans from banks at all. And even if they do, they get loans at 15 to 30% interest, which makes it very, very difficult for them to repay. This is the credit gap in the Indian MSME sector. And a report by IFSE states that in 2012, the credit gap in India was around $200 billion. And now it has crossed $300 billion. So $300 billion worth of loans are required by our MSMEs. And yet only 16% of the small businesses get their money from formal financial institutions in India. This is the reason why most small businesses take loans from moneylenders who charge an interest that is as high as 3 to 5% per week. Now the question over here is, why are the banks not able to give credit to these MSMEs? Well, let's try to understand this problem using a story. Let's say Tirupur Textile is an MSME based out of Chennai and they get a huge order for which they need a loan of 5 lakh rupees for procuring raw materials. So in the current system, this is how tedious the procedure is. Step number one, all the documents of the enterprise are to be submitted to the bank for verification. These documents will include a 12-month bank statement, MSME certificate, ITR returns, GST returns, KYC, and the projected balance sheet of five years, along with profit and loss statements. And then you have something called the project report, where the bank will need to know how will they utilize the loan to grow their business. In this case, Thirupool Textiles will tell the bank that they're going to use this money in order to procure raw materials to serve bigger clients. So now, the bank will evaluate whether Tirupur Textiles is really worthy of taking out a 5 lakh rupees loan or not. And if these documents are not enough, the bank will demand for more documents on the enterprise and then the same process will be repeated again. Now, assuming that in the second round, the bank is convinced about the 5 lakh rupees eligibility, the verification process starts. So now, the document authenticity is verified. So back then, the eligibility was decided, assuming that all the documents that are being submitted are authentic. After that, if needed, there is also physical verification, whereby the bank officials will literally visit the enterprise and check all their processes to verify their claims. So if everything is fine, then the loan goes into the process of interest rate finalization. And again, here two things happen. Number one, the interest rates of the loan is decided. Meanwhile, what the Tirupur Textile members are supposed to do is check for their subsidy eligibility. And this is again a very lengthy process with each state having different departments, which will then examine all the government policies to check if that particular MSME is eligible for a subsidy or not. And the fun fact here is that this process is fast-tracked because of bribing. After this, finally, the sanction letter is issued, customer consent is taken, and the loan disbursement is done. This entire process might take anywhere between 20 days to 6 freaking months. But again, there are 3 problems in this system. 
Firstly, the documents needed for the bank are rarely present with the MSMEs because their dealings are usually done in cash and very less of this data is actually properly accounted for. So the loan is usually rejected in the first phase itself. But at the same time, if you look at the loans that are being given to Kingfisher and the Adanis of India, you will see that the bank is able to give them loans because of the calculative risk that the bank is able to take, because they can understand the financial statements, because they can predict the risk that the company is involved in. So once the bank sees the risk, then they can decide whether they want to take that risk or not. But when it comes to the MSMEs of India, the bank is completely blind as to what kind of risk is it taking with the company. Secondly, even if the docs are legit, from the bank standpoint, if you see, for a 5 lakh rupee loan, this is a very costly process. So for giving out a 5 lakh rupee loan, if they have to spend 25,000 rupees into just processing and physical verification, they're spending 5% of the loan amount in just processing. So by default, they will have to charge an exorbitant interest rate of 15-20% to just to make this venture viable. But if you look at the same case, when the bank actually gives a loan to a giant company like that of Adani's, if they are giving out a loan of 100 crore rupees, it will actually cost the bank less than 1% of this entire capital to actually process this loan and calculate the risk involved in lending to the Adani's. This is the reason why it becomes easier to give out a 100 crore loan to the Adani's versus giving out a 5 lakh rupee loan to a small business owner like Ravi. So if you look at the fundamental problem with the system, it's not like the banks do not care about the MSMEs or they don't want to give loans to these MSMEs. It's just that they don't know what kind of risk are they being exposed to. And when it comes to ticket size of 4 lakh rupees or 5 lakh rupees, the cost to serve is just too high to give them a loan at 5% or 10%. These are the fundamental reasons why the banks of India are able to give out a 100 crore loan to the Adanis but are not able to give out a 5 lakh rupee loan to a small business owner like Ravi. This is the reason why for MSMEs, the average interest ranges from 15% to as high as 30%. Thirdly, when the enterprise needs a working capital to serve a client, it is usually a matter of urgency. But in this case, the turnaround times of the banks are so high that it might take them anywhere between 15 days to even 3 months to give the money to the business owners. So if these business owners cannot buy raw materials immediately, the money is of no use, isn't it? And lastly, the subsidy check is again a big hassle that consumes a lot of time. So in summary, the problems are with the documentation, risk analysis data, turnaround time and the subsidy check. And this is where ladies and gentlemen, the open credit enablement network comes in with a revolutionary solution to solve these problems for the MSMEs of India. And this entire system has three layers. The first is the identity layer. Here's where we have Aadhaar and DigiLocker playing a crucial role. For example, in this case, Tirupur Textiles can verify the identity of the business and its business owners very quickly and easily without the need to submit physical documents. The second layer is the payment layer. And here's where, once the loan is approved, the funds can be transferred directly to Tirupur Textiles bank account via UPI. Similarly, even loan repayments can be done easily through UPI. The third layer is the data layer and here's where we have something called the Data Empowerment and Protection Architecture or DEPA. This allows individuals and businesses to securely share their personal data with the service providers. This can include the financial data such as income and expenditure information which can be used by the lenders to assess the credit worthiness of the MSME. For example, Tirupur Textiles can share their financial data with their potential lenders by which these lenders can easily make an informed decision about the loan eligibility of Tirupur Textiles. This layer also makes sure that the data is shared with these lenders with the consent of the customer. Otherwise, the customer will just be bombarded with spam calls. So now, here's how, in the OCN system, the same process will be executed using the different entities in the value chain. Let's say the same Ravi in 2025 wants a loan of 5 lakh rupees. And here, let's assume that Paytm is the loan service provider, HDFC, ICIC and IDC First Bank are the loan product provider. And ThinkTech is a company that is an account aggregator. Now, Ravi would use Paytm to apply for a 5 lakh rupee loan. And since Paytm would already have the identity of Ravi verified, there is no process required for it. So now, using DEPA, the account aggregator will share the financial data with the loan product providers. So in this case, ThinkTech can get all the financial data from Ravi like GST filing and financials of the enterprise and they would send it to all the loan product providers. In this case, these LPPs are ICICI, HDFC and IDFC First Bank. And now, after evaluating all this data, each of these banks will now make an offer. So ICICI might make an offer of 5 lakh rupees at 7% interest and a tenure of 5 years. 
HDFC might offer 5 lakh rupee loan at 5% interest and a tenure of 7 years and IDC First Bank might offer 5 lakh rupees at 4% for a 5 year tenure so now ravi can choose which offer is best for his enterprise so if he decides to go with IDC First Bank he will accept the offer and the bank will immediately transfer the money to ravi via UPI similarly he will pay the EMI back with the same UPI app this is how the OCEN network will solve the problem for MSMEs in India. And the good news is that the system of OKIN has already started working. OKIN or Open Credit Enablement Network, which is a digital infrastructure being created by the government to democratize the small ticket credit market in India. Seven lenders like ICICI Bank, Kotak Bank have already collaborated with Oaken Week here. We've given about three and a half thousand loans, about 13.8 crores worth of loans. The smallest loan is 160 rupees. The pilot projects of this network have already started whereby loans worth 15 crore rupees have been disbursed for a ticket size of as less as 160 rupees. And it goes all the way up to 10 lakh rupees. The average ticket size of these loans was about 40,000 rupees. And guess what? All these loans were disbursed not in some days or hours, but within minutes of their application. And as we move ahead, these MSMEs will have three incredible superpowers because of the OKEN system. Number one, because of instant loans, they'll be able to maximize their working capital for hassle-free business operation. Secondly, as they take more and more loans, their credit worthiness will increase, helping them serve bigger clients. And lastly, if another catastrophe like COVID happens or if their supply chain gets disrupted due to raw material shortage, they can sustain the bad business seasons very, very easily. This means the MSME engines of our country will be able to support 100 million people and 30% of our GDP will remain safe from these bad business seasons. And this is what defines a robust economy. And cherry on the cake, in this entire process, as these businesses expand, they will produce more output, serve better clients, pay more taxes and eventually employ more people. This is how a new revolution is taking shape in the Indian economic system for the MSMEs of India. So now what remains to be seen is how will Okin evolve to fill this $300 billion credit gap in India. And this brings us to the last part of the episode and that are the study materials to help you understand the MSME sector of India and the Okin system better. The first thing I'm attaching is the Okin website itself which will help you understand all the layers better. Secondly, I am attaching a detailed conversation of the Okin system to help you understand the concept in detail. And after reading through this conversation, you'll actually be able to understand how Swiggy can become a loan service provider for restaurants. So this way, you will see numerous possibilities of the Okin system being applied to different segments of the MSME sector of India. And lastly, I am attaching a blog on the lending card website, which in detail talks about the problems in the MSME sector. So as entrepreneurs, this could be a wonderful problem statement for you to work on to build your business. And before we say goodbye, I want to do my part to support the micro businesses of India, which is why I'm wearing this t-shirt. This t-shirt got sent to me by a very lovely subscriber of Think School. His name is Manthan. He's a teenager who's building this t-shirt company called Down Urban. This is some great stuff. So if you want to support his work, I will leave the link to his Instagram handle in the description. That's all from my side for today, guys. If you learned something valuable, please go ahead and destroy that like button in order to make YouTube Baba happy. And for more such insightful business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.